So this is the video summary of the situation thus far. There's some Japanese news company that makes animations, cartoons of the news. So here's the cartoon of the current situation. So Julian Assange is WikiLeaks is revealing all these secret cables, driving Washington nuts. <laughs> and so uh, various people are trying to do things to stop him. Uh, it does not appear that what he's done is illegal, so they pressured these companies, or at least so it was alleged, to withdraw the services from WikiLeaks. So PayPal and Amazon threw him out. Had to move his servers over to Switzerland before the bank there also threw him out. And in the real world, he's in London. And I think a Canadian guy, official, also wants to execute him. A lot of people want to go outside the law to get rid of him. Um, Sarah Palin also wants to hunt him down. A very popular opinion these days. Um, <laughs> and everybody and their brother has been trying to take down his website, which held down WikiLeaks for a couple of days, but he became invulnerable to that by using mirror sites. But this seems to be what got him, which he predicted and said would happen uh, is the sex scandal. And he's actually being held on those charges right now, although, uh, anyway, he has the nuclear option, however, which, so, this is the basic background of the current situation about WikiLeaks, and there are political implications which I'm not qualified to speak about, but the part that interests me directly is the network security implications. So, that's the summary of the current situation. <laughs> so here are the characters. Julian Assange and WikiLeaks has all these secret files. Um, he has published very few of them, less than 1% of them, redacting them, choosing the ones for maximum effect, and according to him, uh, to make sure not to hurt anybody innocent. But the raw cables, if released, would be even worse. And he has released something called the insurance file a couple of months ago on, on the torrents. Thousands of copies are distributed all over the world that cannot be retrieved. And it is encrypted with AES-256, which is the kind of encryption the US military uses. Nobody is going to get in AES-256 without the key. That's the whole point of it. I'm Part of why I'm motivated to do this is there are so many ridiculously false statements in the press, people saying that it might take as much as 10 years of computer time to crack AES-56. No, it will take all the computers in the universe longer than the whole universe it has to crack AES-256. That's what it's for. That's the whole point of it. If you encrypt something with AES-256, nobody is ever getting in there without the key unless they find a brilliant defect in the mathematics, but they're not going to get in there by trying every key. There's not enough entropy in the universe to try two to the 128 keys. Anyway, um, so the file is out there, but that's his nuclear option. He can release the key, and then suddenly everybody will have access to all the raw data, apparently. Um, and from the size of the file, I think it probably doesn't contain the hard drive from a bank official, but he's supposedly the thing that's coming out early next year is the contents of a hard drive from a major bank official, either Citibank or the Bank of America. They got the whole hard drive of one of their officials all full of the crooked dealings at the bank. But anyway, um, it may not be him in charge by then. He may be locked up or killed or something. Anyway, here's another one of the players, the jester. This guy works in secret. He is a vigilante. He regards himself as a hero. Um, he takes down uh, Islamic Jihadist websites or people he accuses of being Islamic Jihadist websites. There is nothing resembling due process or a trial. Anybody he doesn't like, he blows them away. Um, and he decided to take down WikiLeaks. He brags about his exploits. He seeks press attention. He has a blog. He's on Twitter. He is in IRC chat rooms chatting while taking sites down. Um, and uh, Operation Payback is the third player here, anonymous. 4chan is a group of people posting uh, jokes on the 4chan website, but they decided to take on semi-political causes for to combine a sense of idealism and purpose along with just stirring up a lot of trouble and having fun. So they've been attacking a lot of people. Attacked Scientology and took them down. Uh, a couple of people are in prison for that now. They attacked the RIA and many other people at copyright stuff because they're all on BitTorrent taking copies of movies and stuff. And now they've been attacking everybody that they regard as an enemy of WikiLeaks. Um, and what they're using is the low, uh, low orbit ion cannon, which is a opt-in botnet. You voluntarily join and let them have remote control of your machine, and they can then use it. By the way, um, the mirror sites of WikiLeaks are the same thing. I started setting one up myself, and then I got a little nervous about it, and I didn't do it. 
But if you set up the mirror site, you now give Julian Assange a remote control of your computer. So many people are doing these things, both of which arguably place you in the position of committing some sort of crime on behalf of someone else. <coughs> so I didn't do either of them, but they're both being kind of quite popular ideas. Anyway, um, so there are two kinds of attack here, which is what interests me. Distributed denial of service is the old type. Here's the targets, the original targets, Amazon, PayPal, MasterCard, Visa, and then a lot of others, Palin's website, Lieberman's website, the bank in, in Switzerland that refused to carry their money, and everybody else that irritates Anonymous in the slightest. Um, they take this thing down with the low orbit ion cannon. This thing is really primitive. Um, <coughs> I've got it here. I think it's probably still running in another window. Let's see. Now I've got a, a low orbit ion cannon. Um, is a, of course, a free download from uh, SourceForge. It's open source software. Uh, people tell me it's actually not written very well and they sometimes think about improving it and then they decide that maybe they'll just leave it alone. But this is the low orbit ion cannon. Um, okay, you just choose your target up here. You can put in an IP address or a uh, URL like I could do wikileaks.org. Although it's usually the people attacking in favor of Wikileaks that happen to use this particular tool. Um, lock on does domain name resolutions, you get the IP address. Now if I run this thing, which I think I won't, it will then attack WikiLeaks. It's an extremely crude attack. It just sends thousands, it makes a TCP connection on port 80 and then sends thousands and thousands of HTTP requests. Uh, about a, one or two thousand per second when I just tried it here. And then it's surprisingly ineffective. It took, when I, I I'm not going to do a live demonstration here, I think we haven't got the time, but I ran a server, and it takes about 20 or 30 seconds to bring down the server from one attacker because it's really not a very potent attack. It's also completely obvious. There are a ton of traffic going straight from me straight to there. It's absolutely a way to go to prison. Um, so, however, if you get a lot of people doing it at once, um, with thousands of participants, you can bring down sites. And um, they were able to bring down a lot of sites with this thing, <coughs> brought down Visa and MasterCard. Um, and many other sites, but they couldn't bring down Amazon. Amazon is too powerful, as you might imagine. Um, here's the MasterCard outage, one day and 13 hours. Green is good, you know, up the top. This is a percentage of successful requests from Netcraft. And they brought the thing down for a day and a half. Uh, this took 3,000, and arguably there are as many as 30,000 machines in here. Uh, 3,000 where the people actually joined the IRC chat rooms to voluntarily let their low orbit ion cannon be remotely controlled, um, but there were people who claimed that they had put illegal botnets in there, the real, the professional kind of botnets that the uh, organized criminals use, where they had planted malware on people's machines and taken them over without their consent. And that's how you get really large botnets, 100,000 or a million. They claimed to have one of them. So if you have 3,000 to 30,000 machines, you can take down a medium website for a day and a half. And all those people are just headed straight for jail. I mean, I don't know, they may not bother to prosecute them, but in the server logs, you've got everybody's IP address. There's no way they can possibly conceal the claim that they had some legitimate reason to send you 3,000 requests a second for, for a day and a half. I don't think. Um, so that's the old fashioned denial of service. But this stuff is out of date. Layer 7 denial of service is the new way to do it. That's what the gesture uses. And this stuff has been around for a while. I demonstrated it 18 months ago at DEF CON. Um, Here's the jester. He tweets when he's going to do it. He announces he's taken down a site. It goes down. Then when he's done, he turns it off. It comes right back up, which is exactly what you could do with the slow Lars attack. Um, he's played, shown videos of his tools, and I'm pretty sure it is nothing more than slow Lars with a few extensions. Um, I know that he did it because I was in IRC chatting with him while he brought down WikiLeaks because I was trying to convince him to lay off this. The people he's been playing with before are people that nobody's going to go to bat for in America probably. He has to keep his identity secret because they will probably cut him into little pieces and stick him in the gutter. But he has been off the radar of US law enforcement. And I really don't think attacking WikiLeaks is, <coughs> is maintaining that low profile. And anyway, I think being some kind of crazed terrorist, taking down sites like crazy, maybe not like whatever you want to call him, some kind of, he's an illegal figure and he's prominent in social media. And this is never going to work. He thinks he's invulnerable because he claims he's anonymized his packets, which is just the stupid way technophiles think. They think they're invulnerable because they think they're clever, and that just means, as anybody can tell you, they're more susceptible to social engineering attacks. 
If you want to find him, you just have to say, oh, I'm a news reporter, I want to put you on the cover of Time, or I'm a, I think you're great, I want to imitate you and become your protege, or I want to be your girlfriend or something. And he'll fall for that, because these intellectual types that spend a lot of time thinking about bits and bites are all more vulnerable to these emotional attacks. He shouldn't have a social media presence at the same time he's doing this crazy stuff. And it's a shame, because he has so far he hasn't really hurt anybody. He's not killing anybody, and I think he's going to come to a bad end. But that's what I was trying to convince him in the chat room. But he's, he doesn't care about that. He just wants to brag about his attack. But he didn't turn off the attack and wait until he came back up. And then he turned it on and he went down again. And his, he's not using a botnet. This is one machine. There's WikiLeaks going down for a day and three hours. Um, so that's what really troubles me. I can't do anything about these dysfunctional people that are going to destroy themselves, like Anonymous and the Jester. But we should be able to do something about this. Um, this tool is too powerful. The defenses are too weak. This is layer 7 DOS. The way it works is you connect to the hacker. I know how slow Loris works, which is the first version of this 18 months ago. It then sends an incomplete request. An HTTP GET has about seven lines of code. Get this page from this server, and then it has some other stuff like encoding and your referrer and such. You send about half the request, you never send the other half, so it holds on waiting for the other half of the request. This is like having a phone bank centered, calling them and putting them on hold. 100 machines. Then, then all the lines are busy and they can't get any real calls. And he, the adjuster has just extended this to other kinds of layer 7 requests that are incomplete. And with these incomplete requests, you can bring down a target with one packet per second. You don't need much bandwidth, you don't need a botnet, and you can run it through an anonymization routine like the Tor network, which is what he does. He has some equivalent. So they can't find you, and they can't identify the attack traffic from legitimate traffic. So these things are very hard to stop, and they're very dangerous. They're also much kinder to the internet. The kind of layer seven attack that Anonymous uses brings down everything between you and the target. You're just sending out packets as fast as your network connection can go. You will flood your wireless network, your internet service provider, your college's gateway. Everybody between you and there gets blown away. It's like using a machine gun or a flamethrower. This is like a guided missile. One packet per second is not gonna even be noticed. It's not gonna <coughs> use up anybody's bandwidth. And then when it gets there, bang, the server goes down. Um, it's much better. They used it in the protests against the government of Iran for that reason, because the government was trying to bring down the protesters, and the protesters were using the internet to organize their protest movements. So they asked, Ameri first Americans started using low, um, American sympathizers started shaking down government servers with the old-fashioned attacks, and the protesters complained that you're taking down the entire internet in Iran, and we can't do our work. We want you to use the slow lowers attack, because then you'll take down the government server, and you won't just flood all the lines. And that's what they did. So that's the problem. This thing is subtle, easy to do, and um, it means, but the net result of this is the only reason your website is up is because there is not one person on earth that's angry at you right now. And this is insupportable. No matter what you're doing, there is somebody that hates you. And you should be able to protect yourself from one guy that hates you. <laughs> now the only thing saving us right now is that the people that hate you are stupid. But that will not last. <laughs> We're in the business of educating people, making them smarter. <laughs> and so sooner or later, they will start listening. Um, so we need defense. And right now, the picture is pretty bleak. For layer seven defense, I mean, you can, you're not gonna find anything in the header. There's nothing in that packet. Now, the current tools have a few defects. The slow Loris tool runs at a relatively slow rate, so you can actually take a mod security patch and change the timing on your Apache server and survive that one program. It is trivial to, to change the timing parameters in the program to defeat that. Uh, the low orbit ion cannon, every packet is exactly the same. In fact, each packet has a joke in it. There's a string where you put like an insult. So you could just pick up the packets based on that, but you could obviously modify the program not to do that. Um, anyway, I, I was very discouraged about this up to the last week when I went to a conference, um, Bay Threat, and a guy was there from Akamai. Akamai is a very interesting company. They don't, they just mirror content for other people. So if you have a big a website and a lot of people are going to it, they'll make local mirrors and serve it out. But they'll also save you from DDoS, which I didn't know. That's what they do. They protect people when they go under attack and they have a whole series of tricks they use. Um, one of them was um, really quite effective. You replace the primary page with a blank page that has nothing but a, little, a few lines of JavaScript in it. And all the lines of JavaScript do is make you ask for the page a second time. And the web server looks to see if, you, if your referrer is equal to the page. So you're looking for Yahoo coming from Yahoo. Now that is something that would never normally happen, but it will happen if you're actually viewing the page. This, those are the real customers. 
the attacks will never see that because they don't actually ask for the page, then receive the page, then render it in a browser, execute the code, and go to the next page. That discriminates between the real customers and the attack tools. They're just sending fragmentary traffic that looks good. That was very clever. And I think that would really stop these layer 7 denial of service attacks. First one I've seen that would do it. The other ones have been nasty. Um, the other, there's also people like HD Moore and some others um, have stopped these with simple counterattacks. The one I read just yesterday got under attack by these clowns, so he just redirected his DNS record to point back to their server. So they were attacking themselves. That brought them down in a hurry. <laughs> there are various ways to do that, but of course the penalty is your site has to go down while well, that's happening. But that worked. Um, and there's, there's various tricks like that. This works against dumb people like Anonymous. It would not work against the jester because you can't find any, he doesn't have any central point of failure. He does not, does not have a master command and control server controlling an army, which is the weak spot of all these botnet armies. There's just one machine sending out the packets and you can't find it. It's going through anonymizers. Anyway, um, but you can attend, if you can identify the different kinds of packets, you can protect yourself from that. Anyway, so um, there's all that stuff. Um, I've got references for all those things if you want to see them. And if you want to use any of this, if I'm on the internet, which I ought to be, you can get it off my website. So just go to samsclass.info and I put it there. So um, if anybody wants to use any of this stuff, feel free. That's all I have. Yeah.